Hey Nate, we got Mike Demota, Director of Living Collections here at the National Tropical Botanical Garden. Mike, Nate, and I are out on a walk through your native section today. Wondering if you would go with us and maybe show us a few things. Sure, let's go this way. Right on. So Mike, here we are in the upper native section of the McBride Garden. And this is an area that we feature on our self-guided tour of McBride and our guided tour of McBride for our guests. What can you tell us about the significance of the plantings here? The native section here is where we house um, all of our uh, collections as they come in from the field. Our field botanists will do research and survey work on all the islands, uh, primarily on Kauai, but also on the other islands. And over the last several decades, they've brought in a lot of material, common plants, rare plants, and this is the area that uh, when we grow that material out is, is where we house it. So we kind of look at it as a sort of a botanical Noah's Ark of uh, common and rare and endangered species from Hawaii. So very important to our conservation efforts. It's very here. important to our conservation efforts. As I said, it's been a couple of decades since this section has been planted, and so there are some large common trees that are mature, but also rare ones. and. Um, it helps to create habitat so we can recreate the microclimates that, uh, that the rare plants really need to, to thrive in. This is a tree that in Hawaiian is called Mehamehame. The scientific name is Flugia neobavri, and it's um, one of the rarest hardwood trees in Hawaii. That's one of the nice things about our native section here is we have a collection of native Hawaiian hardwoods, some of which are extremely rare. Most residents of the islands wouldn't know what this tree was because its population in the wild has been reduced to less than 100 individuals among all the islands. Wow. All of our hardwoods have evolved over millions of years without having to deal with many of the insect pests that are common today, twig borers being one. And the giant Mehamehame, having been described by naturalists over a century ago as being the largest hardwood tree in the Hawaiian forest, um, you cannot find giant trees anymore. And if you do, they're dead. They've been dead for a long time. So this particular tree uh, in our collection is one of the better looking ones but they are hammered by all the insects. If there's an insect that's gonna chew, bite, drill in, or do anything to a plant, they will all be attracted to this plant. And there is a rose beetle on the bottom of this leaf even now. Oh wow, look at that. And so that's the cause of the holes in the leaves. And these guys will continually return to this plant every night till all these leaves are eaten. We have a lot of other rare hardwoods that are doing very well and uh, are the only living examples uh, of some of the, of the species uh, in anybody's collections. Awesome. This is Hibiscus brackenridgii. It's our state flower. It's found on all the islands. Most people look at the leaves and wouldn't guess this to be a hibiscus because it's not typical of cultivated hibiscus, the big hybrid varieties that we're all familiar with. This flower uh, blooms in the afternoon and stays open all night where most cultivated hibiscus open in the morning. So this has evolved probably to moth pollination. It has become very rare in the wild. It was actually believed extinct on Oahu until it was rediscovered a couple of decades ago. And this particular form uh, is uh, actually from Makua Valley on Oahu. Other members of the hibiscus family include a, a genus called Kokia, and all the islands had a species native to them, uh, but they've become very rare or extinct on all the other islands. Here on Kauai, Kokia kauaiensis is found in our, in our high forests, uh, but pollen of that and, and macro fossils have been found here in the lowlands as well, so it was once quite common. So this is Bergamia insignis, what uh, the Hawaiian name is uh, Alula, and this plant is uh, kind of iconic for the garden because um, Years back, the National Geographic Society uh, did a special on Steve Permal and Ken Wood and their uh, conservation work on this species. Their population of these plants have been uh, pushed all the way back to the steepest parts of the Napali coast. Um, and so they had to rope off and rappel down the cliffs to get to these plants. And then they found that these, these plants were not producing seed on their own. So they invested a lot of time and started collecting pollen with little paint brushes and carried the pollen from one plant to the next to cross pollinate the flowers and in that way we were able to get seeds from the plants in the wild. Today the population has been reduced down to just two known individuals in the wild. But because of the work they did at that time, um, we do have these in cultivation, we can produce them readily in our garden, and we do have them on display uh, all over this garden as well as some of our other gardens uh, here in Hawaii.